أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه مثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين 
وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من الكرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أن نطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينذرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم 
أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفلون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينكرون صرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إن نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أن خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم؟ بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيرنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين اللهم إنا نحتفظك ونستودعك أدياننا وأبداننا وأنفسنا وأهلنا وأولادنا 
وأولادنا وأموالنا وكل شيء أعطيتنا اللهم اجعلنا وإياهم في كنفك وأمانك وعياذك من كل شيطان مريد وجبار عنيد وذي بغي وذي حسد ومن شر كل ذي شر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم جملنا بالعافية والسلام وحققنا بالتقوى والاستقامة وأعذنا من موجبات الندامة إنك سميع الدعاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وأولادنا ومشايخنا وأصحابنا وإخواننا في الدين ولمن أحبنا فيك ولمن أحسن إلينا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا كمال المتابعة له ظاهرا وباتنا في عافية وسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله يا الله يا الله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفروا الله إن الله غفور رحيم أستغفر الله 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 
استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم واتوب اليه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله 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 سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الذین قال لهم الناس ان الناس قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم ایمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوکیل 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 فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء واتبعوا ردوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم اللهم يا لطيف ألطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف ألطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف ألطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم آمين 
أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صاحب التاج والمعراج والبراك والعلم دافع البلاء والوباء والقحط والمرض والألم اسمه مكتوب مرفوع مشفوع منكوش في اللوه والقلم سيد العرب والعجم جسمه مقدس معتر متهر منور في البيت والحرم شمس الدحى بدر الدجى صدر العلا نور الهدى كهف الورى مصباح الظلم جميل الشيم شفيع الأمم صاحب الجود والكرم والله عاصمه وجبريل خادمه والبراك مركبه والمعراج سفره وسدرة المنتهى مقامه وقاب قوسين مطلوبه والمطلوب مقصوده والمقصود موجوده سيد المرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين أنيس الغريبين رحمة للعالمين راحة العاشقين مراد المشتاقين شمس العارفين سراج السالكين مصباح المقربين محب الفقراء والغرباء والمساكين سيد الثقلين نبي الحرمين إمام القبلتين وسيلتنا في الدارين وسيلتنا في الدارين صاحب قاب قوسين محبوب رب المشرقين والمغربين جد الحسن والحسين جد الحسن والحسين مولانا ومولى الثقلين أبي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله نور من نور الله نور من نور الله يا أيها المشتاقون بنور جماله صلوا عليه وآله وأصحابه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وارغلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين
آمين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا حليم يا عليم أنت ربي وعلمك حسبي فنعم الرب ربي ونعم الحسب حسبي تنسر من تشاء وأنت العزيز الرحيم نسألك العصمة في الحركات والسكنات والكلمات والإرادات والخطرات من الشكوك والذنون والأوهام الساترة للقلوب عن مطالعة الغيوب فقد ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا فثبتنا وانصرنا وسخر لنا هذا البحر كما سخرت البحر لموسى وسخرت النار لإبراهيم وسخرت الجبال والحديد لداود وسخرت الريح والشياطين والجن لسليمان وسخر لنا كل بحر هو لك في الأرض والسماء والملك والملكوت وبحر الدنيا وبحر الآخرة وسخر لنا كل شيء يا من بيده ملكوت كل شيء كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين واهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين وهب لنا ريحا طيبة كما هي في علمك وانشرها علينا من خزائن رحمتك واحملنا بها حمل الكرامة مع السلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في دنيانا وديننا وكن لنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أهلنا واطمس على وجوه أعدائنا وامسخهم على مكانتهم فلا يستطيعون المضيء ولا المجيء إلينا 
وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَطَمَسْنَا عَلَىٰ أَعْيُنِهِمْ فَاسْتَبَقُوا الصِّرَاطَ فَأَنَّا يُبْسِرُونَ وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَمَسَخْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ مَكَانَتِهِمْ فَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا مُضِيًّا وَلَا يَرْجِعُونَ Yaseen Wal Qur'an al-Hakim Innaka la min al-mursaleen Ala siratim mustaqim Tanzeel al-Aziz al-Rahim Litunzir qawman ma unzir abauhum fahum ghafilun Laqad haqqa alqawlu ala aktharihim fahum la yu'minun Inna ja'alna fi a'anaqihim aghlalan fahiyya ila al-adhqan fahum mukumahun Waj'alna min bayni aydihim saddan wa min khalfihim saddan fa'aghshaynahum fahum la yubusirun شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه وعنت الوجوه للحي القيوم وقد خاب من حمل ظلما طاسين حاميم عين قاف مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان حاميم 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 هم الأمر وجاء النصر فعلينا لا ينصرون حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي التول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير بسم الله بابنا تبارك حيطاننا ياسين سقفنا كاف ها يا عين صاد كفايتنا حاميم عين سين قاف حمايتنا فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم ستر العرش مسبول علينا وعين الله ناظرة إلينا بحول الله لا يقدر علينا والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين 
فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز يا لطيف 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 
يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه الطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه الطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه الطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير اللهم يا من لطفت في خلق السماوات والأرض ولطفت بالأجنة في بطون أمهاتها ألطف بنا لطفا يليك بكرمك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله اللهم يا من جعلت الصلاة على النبي من القربات نتقرب إليك بكل صلاة سليت عليه من أول النشأة إلى ما لا نهاية من الكمالات بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك 
اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك إن شاء الله نكتنى بذكر جامعة لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله إن شاء الله ما يكتوعنا اللهم أمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما بركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our Shaykh, teacher, Murshid, and master, Sayyidina Shaykh Faisal Hamid Abdul Razak. O oh Allah, may you increase him in knowledge and wisdom. O oh Allah, may you protect him from evil, and we pray that he will lead his marids on the straight path towards you. O oh Allah, we pray for the Shaykh and his family. We pray that you strengthen them in Iman, keep them in good health, and grant them long life in Islam. O oh Allah, we pray that you protect them from all evil, ease their trials, and grant them the sweetness of paradise. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allah forgive us for our sins and guide us on the straight path leading to paradise. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of us present here. O oh Allah, answer our dawn and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our parents that you grant them your grace and mercy as they raised us in childhood. O oh, oh Allah, grant our parents long life and good health in Islam. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our parents and grant them paradise. O Allah, for our parents who have passed away and returned to you, Allah, we beg you to forgive them. O Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the murids of Shaykh Faisal throughout the world. O Allah, we pray that you ease our trials and, us, and grant us the strength to face our trials. O Allah, make it easy for us to gain true knowledge and to practice it, to be good murids and to get ever closer to you. 
O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of the Murids. O oh Allah, we beg you to answer our, our dua and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the Muslims around the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you strengthen us in Iman. O oh Allah, we pray for unity and to make us stronger as a nation. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please comfort and relieve all Muslims who are suffering and have suffered losses. O oh Allah, you are the all-powerful and the almighty. O oh Allah, we beg you to give us victory against the unbelievers. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for the International Islamic Forum and al fasl and Dhikr Halaqa. May you make it easy for us to establish many messages for your sake. May you bless the Islamic Forum and al fasl and Dhikr Halaqa to be, a beacon of, to be a beacon of light for Islam throughout the world. And may you help us to finish building the new masjid soon and make it easy for us to do so. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursani walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah Sayyiduna Muhammadun Rasulullah. A'udhu billahi sami'il alimi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahi rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan abdullahi wa rasuluh Allahumma fta'a alayna futuha al-arifin wa wafiqna tawfika al-salihin wa anfa'na Allahumma bil-Qur'ani wa al-dhikr al-hakim Allahumma allimna ma yanfawna wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna min fadlika ilman wa ta'aliman yukarribuna minka bi rahmatika ya arhama rahimin Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد. My dear respected brothers and sisters, my dear Marids, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. And welcome once again to our special program. This is our daily broadcast uh, coming to you from the Islamic Forum of Canada starting at 7 p.m. Uh, every day. Uh, we welcome you to our program. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. We hope you can join us every day at 7 p.m. Toronto time or Eastern time. We kindly request you to reach out to others and tell them about this program. Uh, your family members, your relatives, your friends, uh, other Muslims you know. Tell them about the program, invite them to watch the program. Inshallah, they'll benefit from the program and you will re receive increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also kindly request you to enter your information in the chat, um, your name and city where you're from, and your updates for the three ongoing projects, the Gratitude Project, the Salawat Project, and the Quran Project. We also want to recognize uh, our sponsors for the dinner program today, and all those that have sponsored the dinner program for this program, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, inshallah. And also our donors, we want to uh, thank them and make special dua for them for, the, for supporting us financially, supporting the Islamic Forum, and making generous donations to Islam from all those who donated today, yesterday, and before. 
Uh, we pray Allah SWT, bless all our donors, bless their families, bless their loved ones, answer all their dua, enrich them many more times than what they donate to the Islamic Forum. Uh, may Allah SWT increase them in his sustenance, in his risk, because of their donation to the Islamic Forum of Canada. We also want to make special dua for all those who requested dua. There are several uh, brothers and sisters and families that have requested dua. We include all of them in dua uh, for our program today. And all those who enter their information in the chat, uh, we make special dua for them. And for each and every one of you, we make special dua for each and every one of you. Whatever dua you want to make, please. Uh, keep that knee in your heart and we make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, your dua and I also want to include my entire family in dua my wife my children uh, my sisters and my siblings and their family uh, my entire family and especially my mom and my dad make special dua for them and I kind of request you to remember them in your dua if possible inshallah we also want to mention that for this program, our concern is your safety, your well-being, your security, your afia, uh, and firstly, and, and secondly, uh, your spirituality, your connection uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we want to direct you on that path to achieve that objective of more closeness, greater closeness and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the Prophet your spirituality. Those are two important concerns for our program. And uh, I also want to mention that uh, to this end, uh, we have several things that we mention every day, the action items we need to do and the lectures that we do uh, to help you to achieve the, uh, this important objective your safety and well-being, and your spirituality. We, we've also prepared for you, the admin staff, the staff here at the Islam Forum, prepared especially for you uh, some special video uh, lectures, video clips. There's a series, series that we have prepared for you uh, about the life history of the Prophet And then there is what another series called the Editor's Pick. These are spe special short videos for you, for your, your enjoyment, for your benefit, for to increase in knowledge and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are always preparing uh, more information for you, for your benefit. All of this free of charge, only for you to benefit from inshallah. And if you would like to receive uh, these uh, special video clips and video series, please uh, send us your email address to the email address we use for this program, sheikhfaisal at gmail.com. And also your WhatsApp number, if you have a WhatsApp number, so we can put you on the WhatsApp list. Uh, and especially the email list. This is the most frequent way of communicating with you and sending you all of this information. So do send us your email address so you can receive the special uh, video series, the editor's pick, the serial series, and other series that we are preparing for your benefit Insha'Allah. Today I also want to say something uh, specifically about one of our projects, the Infaq project, of the importance of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, to share with you some reflections on some of the verses in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the importance of spending in the cause of Allah. I share with you first a beautiful hadith uh, from Sayyidina Abu Dhar al Ghifari. This noble companion, uh, Sayyidina Abu Dhar, عنه, he had a, a unique habit uh, that he would do, and the Sahabas would notice this, and they, they, they asked him about it. And this habit was that after each and every salah, fard salah, five times a day in Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina. After each salah, he would give some sadaqah. Each for salah. So that he's doing it five times a day after the five daily salah. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asir, Maghrib, Isha. 
he's giving them some sadaqah, finding some poor person, someone in need, giving them. And he, he wasn't a wealthy person by no means. There were other sahabs that were much more wealthier than him. But he had uh, this uh, beautiful habit that he would do. And sometimes it may just be uh, a small, something small he's giving us sadaqah, sharing some dates with some, with, uh, some of the other uh, companions who were in need and so on. But he would engage in sadaqah regularly after each salah, uh, five times a day. And so uh, some of the companions, the sahabs, ask him why he's doing that. Why every day after each and every salah, they notice that he's giving sadaqah, he's doing charity. Uh, and they asked him about it. He said, do you not read the book of Allah, the Quran? Uh, and he says that every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to pray, he always commands us to uh, give charity. And when you look at the Quran, you see uh, this is true. It's a, it's a, it's a statement of fact. The where of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa aqimu salah, and establish prayer. He's always following it up, wa atu zakat, and give zakat. Zakat uh, in, the, in the generic sense, meaning all forms of charity. Uh, so he did, immediately after uh, the command of salah, in the same verse or the next verse, it's there, it's connected, always, throughout the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to pray, commanding us to pray, and He's telling, commanding us to uh, give charity. And so he, say, he said that's why He's doing it. After each and every salah, five daily salah, He's doing it. He took this uh, command literally, and He's doing it. And so He had this beautiful practice that the Sahabas uh, also followed as much as they could, as best as they could. Uh, Sayyidina Budhar al Ghifari. I wanted to share this with you so that you can develop this habit, bearing in mind what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us in the Qur'an about uh, establishing prayer, the command, wa aqimu salah, establish prayer, the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa atu zakat, and give charity. This is how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this beautiful command in the Qur'an. Then, at the very beginning of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Baqarah, after Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah. The very beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes the importance of spending in the way of Allah. In fact, fi sabilillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, Alif la meem, thalika al-kitabu la rayba fi hudal lil muttaqeen. So two important concepts are mentioned here. This is the book, thalika al-kitabu la rayba fi. This is the book, in which there is no doubt. There's no, there, there are no doubts, there, there are no uh, mistakes, there are no inaccuracies in this book, in the Quran. This is a perfect book, without any mistakes. And, and this is a unique book, uh, the Quran. No other book you would see that happening, e even a book today. Uh, and the, the author would not see I'm writing this book now, and I guarantee there are no mistakes in this book. Because the moment he does that, people start looking for mistakes in that book. That's the first thing they're doing, searching for mistakes, and finding it, and then telling him, or publishing it, oh, there are mistakes in the book. Your, your, your claim is a fake claim. That, that's what they would say. And so the Meccans, the people in Mecca, the Quraysh, uh, they did this actually. They were looking at the book and trying to find faults in the book, trying to produce something like it. Challenge, uh, respond to the challenges in the Quran, and they could never do that. They could never do that. So the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes about this book. The, in this book, there are no mistakes, no doubts, no inaccuracies, no ambiguities, nothing like that. It's a perfect book. The most perfect book ever in all of creation. The book of Allah. And then he says, Huda lil muttaqeen. And it is guidance for those who fear Allah, for those who are conscious of Allah, for those who are mindful of their duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the believer, the believers, you're mindful of duty, duties to Allah. Who is it that would benefit from this book? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us right at the very beginning. Huda lil muttaqeen. 
This book, even it's a perfect book, the perfect book of guidance that would give you success in this life and in the hereafter. But not everyone will benefit from this book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us it is guidance, it will benefit certain people with certain characteristics. And he tells us, Muttaqeen, people of taqwa. And then the last one explain who they are. Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib. Those who believe in the unseen. In meaning what Allah SWT has revealed. That they believe everything that Allah SWT has revealed even though they cannot see it. Because usually, normal human behavior is that they, people want to see something in order to believe it. They claim this. If they see it, they'll believe it. But sometimes, if the heart, if the heart is diseased, that they, even when they see it, they would not believe it. And this happened to the unbelievers. Allah, and Allah SWT mentions this in the Quran. Even when they saw the truth, they would not believe it. But Allah SWT says, those who will benefit from the Quran, الَّذِينِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْقَيْمِ They believe in the unseen. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And they establish prayer. They establish prayer. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ and they spend of what we have bestowed upon them. Look again here, right, right at the very beginning. They establish prayer, and then immediately followed by the, the command or the description of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from what we've given them, they spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are the people now that will benefit from the guidance in the Quran. They spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you don't know how that guidance will come to you, how that benefit will come to you, because this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you his guidance, will bless you with his guidance. You, you'll find see that you start to understand this Quran more and uh, your inner thoughts are guided and are purified and you're motivated to do good things. You're granted the tawfiq to do good things. There, there are many people who uh, may want to do good things but they don't get wrong to doing it. And then others are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they are able to do good things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, and, and so uh, in this, this ayah, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is establishing this important principle for us. Who are the ones, who are the people that will be, will be blessed or will benefit? from the guidance of the Qur'an. Who will be guided by this Qur'an? Huda lil muttaqin. Among the, their characteristics is that they spend in a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa mimma razaqunahum yunfikun. Yet again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 177, a special ayah. This ayah is called Ayatul Birr. Ayatul Birr. Chapter 2, verse 177. There, there are some ayahs in Quran that have a, a title. The most famous one is Ayatul Kursi that you all know. Uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 255. Surah Al-Baqarah 255. Right? Uh, that, that's one example. This is another example. Ayatul Bir. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what is not Bir and what is Bir. And Bir is the pinnacle of the good qualities of the believers. Like the believers have good qualities. The Muslimun, Mu'minun, Muttaqun, uh, Qanitun, Sabirun, and so on. The pinnacle of that is Bir, to have Bir. Al-Abrar. And here Allah SWT in this Ayatul Bir 177 states, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِي الْقُرْبَى 
واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والموفون بعهدهم إذا عاهدوا والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says It is not righteousness or beer that you turn your faces to the east or west the directions and so on that you turn meaning your outward deportment uh, how you are outwardly that is not really uh, your true righteousness or beer but it is righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the messengers and to spend of your sustenance. So Allah SWT mentions what is truly beer. Start with our carnal iman, the things that we believe in, the, the necessary essential articles of faith. And then immediately to spend of what you own, what Allah SWT has uh, blessed you with. Out of love for Him, for Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ That you love Allah SWT, you spend of what, Allah, of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted to you. You give charity, you give sadaqah, you do infaq, fi sabilillah. So that is bir, that is righteousness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the categories of people, people who are in need, uh, that you should, uh, you should spend on, and good causes, and so on. So this is an important characteristic of the believer. Here, uh, how is beer described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the characteristics for someone who can achieve the pinnacle of the good qualities of the believer? Bir. They spend out of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them because of their love for Allah. So it's an indication of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spend in the way of Allah. It's, it's indicative of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we should be mindful of. Truly, uh, spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a great characteristic to have that brings you great benefits in the dunya and in the hereafter. And in the hereafter, day of judgment, there, there are people who would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send them back into the dunya. They would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send them back into the dunya. To do what? So that they would engage in sadaqah. They would spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they, when they see now the, the ghita, the, 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 the covers are taken away from them, they can see reality in the hereafter. وَبَصُرُكَ الْيَوْمَ hadid That in the hereafter, see things clearly, to see the benefit of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said they wish they could have done more of that. So they beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, send me back into the dunya. Let me live another life so that I can spend in your way. So th this, this, these are great qualities that we should strive to inculcate and at every opportunity strive to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us tawfiq so that we can spend in His way and He can grant us the great success of the dunya and especially the great success of the akhirah in genital firdaus. Ameen, ameen, ameen. And now we would listen to our special lecture for today. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Today inshallah we are starting a new series of lectures um, as you know, we completed a beautiful series on Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, radiallahu anhu. We did uh, 14 parts, 14 lectures in that series, uh, all of which are on the YouTube channel. Uh, for the past two to three weeks, we've been doing that series, so you can go and listen to the lecture from the daily live stream broadcast that's recorded. Uh, and saved on the YouTube channel. Today, 
uh, we want to start a new series on dhikr, specifically the Weird al Am dhikr, uh, to do a commentary on the Weird al Am dhikr based on uh, this book that we wrote called Al Weird al Am, the General Litany. Al Weird al Am, a, a small book but very useful. Uh, just as how we did the other book on the blessings of Salawat, uh, another important uh, textbook, nice book, small for easy reading that you can enjoy, inshallah. We hope you can have these books in your home library that you can be referring to frequently and your family members can be reading. It's, it's, it's written in such a way for easy reading. The chapters are all very short. So you can read one chapter in less than 10 minutes, you know, five minutes you spend with the book, read a page or two, and it's all very practical information. So this is a book that this new series is based on. al uh, the general litany, the special dhikr that we are doing every day, as you know. When we start our program every day, we do Quran first, Fatih and Yasin, and then we do the Weird Alam Dhikr. And then I've mentioned to you many times that you should be reciting the Weird Alam in the morning and in the evening. In the evening, you do it with us as part of the, the daily broadcast. In the morning after Fajr, inshallah. And if perchance you miss it, you should try to make it up, recite it at some point uh, in the day, as soon as possible thereafter inshallah it has great blessings and benefits for you uh, the, we will start today to deal with the adab of dhikr i want to share with you some adab of dhikr that would help you to raise the level of your dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can improve uh, the way that you are conducting this dhikr how you're doing it and so on and then therefore increase the benefits and the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so a wonderful series that I hope inshallah you can all benefit from and uh, so we'll have our first lecture on this series of al weird al -Am commentary أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you Allah سبحانه وتعالى reveals in the Quran in the Surah Al-Baqarah, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ And remember me, and I will remember you. Remember me, and I will remember you. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ And the scholars have mentioned many great spiritual secrets contained in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, invites us to engage in remembrance of Him, in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَذْكُرُونِي and then he says, Adhkurkum. 
he'll remember you. And uh, the, Im the implication of uh, the Kurkum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember us, is that there are great, amazing benefits of the care that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows on the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who engage in his dhikr and responds to them in amazing ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, uh, addressing the believers, Ya ayyuladina amanu, udhkuru laha dhikran kathira. Engage much in the remembrance of Allah. Engage much or in much remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no limit to how much you can remember Allah. The more you remember Allah, the better it is for you, the, the more you engage in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the better it is for you, certainly. And uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says that this uh, dunya, this world in which we in is mal'oona, it's, uh, it's of no value or benefit to you except the dhikr of Allah, except the dhikr of Allah. That that time you spent engaged in dhikr of Allah. And Imam Al-Qurtubi mentions that every act of obedience of Allah is an act of remembrance of Allah. Yes. So uh, we can always be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu the best of example, is described uh, in the hadith in uh, Imam Bukhari Sahih. كَانَ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي كُلِّ الْأَحْيَانِ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ فِي كُلِّ الْأَحْوَالِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam would engage <coughs> The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would engage in the remembrance of Allah at all times and in all situations. This is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is described in, in the hadith. So he would engage in remembrance of Allah at all times and in all situations. And when he told his beloved wife, Sayyidah Aisha, uh, about this spiritual state of his, she inquired, Ya Rasulullah, how can you engage in a remembrance of Allah when you are sleeping? And he responded to her, saying that, when he's sleeping, his eyes are asleep, but his heart is still awake. His heart is still awake, engaging in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how we should be, strive to engage in the remembrance of Allah at all times. And I want today uh, to share some commentary on the most important dhikr, the Wirdul Am dhikr, based on this uh, small book that you wrote, Al Wirdul Am, the General Litany, uh, a commentary on the Wirdul Am dhikr. The Wirdul Am dhikr, it's referred to as the foundational dhikr of the spiritual journey to Allah. The foundational dhikr of the spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it contains the three pillars of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are three pillars of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there are different sets of pillars in Islam. The most famous one that you all know are the five pillars of Islam. The Prophet says in the hadith, Bunyal Islam ala khamsin. Islam is built on five pillars, and he mentioned the five pillars. And then the, the next uh, important set of pillars are the Arkanul Iman, the pillars of Iman, those six fundamental pillars of belief that we, we subscribe to as believers. We are, uh, we are obligated to do so, to believe in them, accept them. In a similar way now, there are three pillars of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, these are uh, istighfar, salawat, and tahleel. Istighfar meaning to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the first component of the Wirdul Am dhikr. And the purpose is self-purification, that you want to cleanse yourself Purify yourself in order to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then secondly, the second pillar of the journey, spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is salawat. To invoke blessings, 
peace and blessings on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Salat and salams on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is a way now to attach yourself, to connect yourself with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to establish a close relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by reciting salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the second component of the Weird al Am dhikr and the second pillar of the spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and thirdly, the third pillar of the journey is tahleel, which means to reaffirm the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting la ilaha illallah or any of the related formulas. La ilaha illallah. Uh, and this now is the way by which we travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So self-purification, purifying yourself, Holding on to the Prophet ﷺ, for that is the methodology of going to Allah. And then La ilaha illallah takes you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These three components are the components of the Weird Al-Am dhikr. This is why it is described as the foundational dhikr of the spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every other dhikr is based on this foundation. Just as how a home has its foundation and everything is built on the, that home is built on the foundation. Similarly, the weird alarm, the general litany is the, the base, the foundation of every other dhikr and your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, I want to share with you some of the adab of dhikr, the etiquette, the mannerisms of dhikr. What you should be mindful of when you engage in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that this is the most virtuous act of ibadah you can engage in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in the Quran, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. Meaning this amazing, great, virtuous, act of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any other act of worship, salah, siyam, zakat, hajj, infaq, sadaqah, spending with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these other things, they are all enriched. They become better if they contain more and more dhikr. Dhikr nourishes them, cultivates them, uh, makes them better, beautifies that act of worship. The more dhikr there is in it, in that act of worship that you're doing, no matter what it is. That is the beauty of dhikr. And so in the hereafter, the believers would remember the time they spent doing dhikr in the dunya. They'll be talking about it in the, the hereafter. Just as how you are listening to this program, which is, which is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listening to this lecture. Uh, and you are perhaps with your family members and others. And then we engage in dhikr so often, uh, whether it is physically here in our Zawiya, at Islamic Forum of Canada, or the online audience, the virtual audience that we have in so many cities and countries throughout the world that you're all part of. Yes, in the Akhirah, we will remember these beautiful moments of dhikr, talking about it. And then one of the few regrets of the believers in Jannah is that they did not spend more time in the dunya doing dhikr of Allah. When they see the great blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them in the akhirah in Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to engage in much dhikr in this dunya and to be from among the ahlu dhikr, the people of dhikr in the dunya and in the akhirah. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Udhkuru Allaha dhikran kathira. When you think about how much dhikr you should do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the answer to that question in the Quran. Engage in as much dhikr as you can do. There are no limit. As we would say, the expression used, the sky is the limit. If you want, meaning that there is no limit. That you keep doing dhikr all the time, as much as you can. You should also remember that Essentially, the dhikr of Allah, the dhikr that you engage in, this act of dhikr that you're doing, who is it you are connecting with? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're remembering Allah. You're not remembering people or things. Dhikr, dhikrullah, 
means the remembrance of Allah. That we engage in this act that connects, connects you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this dhikr has amazing benefits. You recite it and you gain rewards and blessings. You gain thawab, rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you also reap the special fruits, spiritual fruits, by reciting this litany, this weird alam dhikr. You experience its purifying and purging impact. The purifying and purging impact of the weird alam dhikr purifies you from, cleanses you from everything unwanted, purges you from sins and the effect of sins when you recite this weird alam dhikr. It has its beautifying and spiritual effects on the nafs, the self, beautifies and purifies. The nafs. It has this beautifying and spiritual effect on the heart, the kalb, the spiritual heart. Purifies it, beautifies it. On the soul, the ruh. This is what it does for you, the weird al am dhikr. And whoever does not have a litany will have no such spiritual fruits. Your fruit, your spiritual fruit and benefit is dependent upon your litany. Litany means a collection of dhikr. The weird alam is a general litany, the foundational dhikr, the most important dhikr of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you need to have this litany, this daily regimen of dhikr. And there are many other dhikr you do after the weird alam, but I'm focusing now on the weird alam because this is the basis, this is the foundational. As it is described, it is the foundational dhikr of the spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you should be mindful of. And, and let this weird al-am be your daily companion. Yes, let the weird al-am be your daily companion. In the morning, you're reciting it. In the evening, you're reciting it. In the morning, uh, when you wake up and you perform your fajr salah, then immediately after your Fajr Salah, you recite your Weird Alam Dhikr. And it beautifies you, beautifies your day, uh, takes you, keeps you in the shade of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Great are the spiritual fruits of this Weird Alam Dhikr. We should also be mindful of the concept of purification of purification at different levels. But this concept of purification that you want to engage in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2, verse 222. So this is an easy reference for you to remember. I want you to memorize this. Chapter 2, verse 222. The eye of purification. In Allah, yuhibbu tawwabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who repent to him and love those who purify themselves. And so here in this ayah, there is a connection between the inner reality and the out, outer reality. The inner reality inside of us, our hakika, how we purify ourselves. And so we all, that concept of, uh, of tawbah, of returning back to Allah, of turning to Allah, Repentance, tawbah, uh, you're always uh, trying to do that. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who do this, loves those who uh, seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. And it's, it's amazing, imagine that, that uh, someone may do something wrong, uh, and then you would think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be angry with them because they do something wrong. But the way of the believer now is that we, we, we may do wrong things, but whenever we do something wrong, we rush back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, forgiveness, repenting to Allah, doing tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the time, every time you do something wrong, you want to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should be mindful of doing this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who return back to Him. 
turn back to him. Because committing a sin, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is moving away from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to rush back to him. And he loves you when you do that. It's amazing, this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of him bring, being angry with you, he loves you when you rush to him, begging him for his forgiveness. Yes, always remember this. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you when you do this. So this is the inner reality that you always want to be with Allah. You want to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent to Allah. Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, yuhibbul mutatahirin. And those who uh, purify themselves outwardly as well. So there's a connection between inner purification and outer purification also. It is important. The outer purification. We don't only focus on inner purification, but we also focus on outward purification, how we are, our deportment, our state, and so on. And the first of which is purification of the body. That you should uh, make sure that y you are clean and pure. Your body is clean and pure. And so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his sharia, has prescribed wudu and ghusl as means of purification. As means of purification. That uh, you, you should always strive to be in a state of wudu. This wudu is the weapon of the believer. Yes, wudu is the weapon of the believer against shaitan. That the more you maintain a state of wudu, uh, the more you protect yourself from shaitan. Always be mindful about this. And, and ghusl, that you should frequent, frequently do ghusl. Ghusl means a complete uh, spiritual bath that you would engage in, ghusl. And it is sunnah, for example, uh, to do ghusl to prepare for Friday, Jum'ah. Ah. This is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Eid al-Fitr. And on, on, on any special occasion like this, in addition to your regular daily bath that you should be doing. And the ghusl means uh, the, the easy way to do this, and you can refer to our book on essentials of salah in the purification section for all the details and the fiqh rulings about th these matter. Uh, but uh, you would uh, take your bath by purifying yourself and make wudu first, and then wash your entire body like this. So you, you, you make wudu and then you do ghusl. Inshallah. Uh, of course, all the details are in the, the book I wrote on essentials of salah uh, and purification. But I just want to briefly remind you about this, that you should always try to be in a state of wudu, take a regular bath, and especially now for dhikr. You should make sure that your body is clean for dhikr. Uh, and it's not smelling of perspiration and bad odor and so on. That you mindful of the purification of your body. The importance of purification is such that uh, the, the prophets of some established for us the practice of tayammum, of tayammum, that even if there is no water, you should be in a state of spiritual purification by using dust or to, to wipe certain parts of the body, to purify yourself if you, there's no water, in the absence of water, or if you, your, your position, your circumstances prevent you from using water, such as illness and so on. You still have to maintain that uh, spiritual purification in this way. So important it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who would do that. So I want you to be mindful of the purification of the body. Secondly, the purification of the cloth, the cleanliness of the cloth that you're wearing for dhikr, the garment, that it must be clean uh, and it, it must not have any bodily odors on it, such as perspiration or unpleasant smell. The Prophet Ali was uh, concerned about this, uh, that he mentioned in the hadith that if you eat onion and garlic and that odor is coming from your mouth you shouldn't go to the masjid you should clean yourself first 
And uh, today, th there are easy ways of doing that with mouthwash and other things that you can do to make sure that you always maintain that cleanliness. And so the, uh, the clothing you wear, be mindful about it that it doesn't smell bad. It's clean and it smells nice, looks good. Uh, so the clothing you wear should be clean also when you're doing the care, the, the riddle arm the care, that you want to be mindful of this as best as you can, as best as you can. I don't expect you to make drastic changes immediately in one day or one night, but keep your eye on the ball, so to speak, that this is what you want to achieve and you work towards this. And one of the ways that the Prophet Sallallahu taught us is that he had special outfit for special occasion. For example, Juma, he, he had his clothing that he would wear for Juma, his gang, would be only for Juma. He would not wear it for, during the rest of the week. And this is one of the things that you can be mindful of. You, have, you should have an outfit, a special outfit, that you only wear for dhikr, that you don't wear it for other things. This is especially for dhikr. And you always keep it clean. Maybe uh, more than one outfit, uh, two outfits, so that if you need to laundry one of them, you have a second one that you can be using. But this is only for dhikr, real alarm dhikr that you have, that you don't use uh, this clothes for other things. And, you know, for, for the evening dhikr that we do uh, together for our daily broadcast, uh, you should have a special outfit for the dhikr that you do during this program. And the entire program is, is dhikr, whether it's Quran recitation or the actual weird alam dhikr and the other dhikr that we do and the dua and the dars, all of which is considered dhikr. The entire session is a blessed session of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So try to get a special outfit that you would use for that. Don't use the clothing that you were using all day. You know, prepare for it. And many of you have mentioned to, to us you, in our conversation that this is what you're doing. I want to encourage all of you to try to do this. Once again, in a gradual way, in a gradual way, little by little, one step at a time, make those changes, inshallah. And it's good to write down these points I'm saying in this lecture on the commentary of the Weird al Dikir so that you can implement them one by one, one step at a time, in a gradual way. I want it to be comfortable for you, but I want you to uh, be mindful about this. Th the third point is the purification of the, the place that you're doing dhikr. The place that you are doing dhikr. You want to be mindful about that as well. The place should be clean. Because what it does, it attracts angels to be with you. Angels like uh, a place which is clean. Uh, this is important for you to understand and recognize and know. Angels are attracted to places that are clean and smelling nice. The places that are dirty, shaitan, uh, the, the evil jinns and sun, they are attracted to those places. And, and for example, in the toilet, that's one of the places uh, they like to be. And this is why in the sunnah, uh, the, the, there's the dua that we would make, the Prophet ﷺ taught this dua for us that you would make when you enter uh, the, the toilet to protect you from the jinns that are there. Allahumma a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khaba'ith. Yes. Uh, so you want to be mindful about this. And even for the washroom now, your toilet, you want to main, maintain its cleanliness all the time. The, for even there, it would prevent the evil jinns from associating there, that your home can be clean and have the presence of angels uh, therein uh, and not the, pres pres the presence of shayateen. And, and so there is a beautiful sunnah of the ummah for these past 14 centuries that many of you may have observed your parents or grandparents doing this. It is something that's lost now in our Muslim community in many places. I hope it can be revived. I hope each one of you can revive this practice, this particular sunnah of the ummah. And that is, uh, on, on, on Thursdays, 
in typical Muslim homes in the past, uh, the, the mothers and grandmothers and so on uh, would engage in cleaning the home, cleaning the home on Thursdays and towards the night especially to burn incense in the home, bukhur and, and so on, sweet smelling thing, to prepare for Friday. They do this on Thursday, so Thursday night they can welcome the angels into their homes. This is the reason why, because the, the Eid of the week is Jummah. The Eid of the week is Jummah. Yes, we have not only two Eids in the year, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Those are annual Eids, but we have every week we have an Eid. So 52 weekly Eids in the year is Jummah. And the night of Jummah is the Eid for the angels to come in large numbers. Yes, they do. And when you prepare your home like this, you're, clean, you're cleaning your home every Thursday uh, and burning bukhur and incense and so on, smell, and nice smelling things, then it attracts the angels to your home. And, and this is what uh, our mothers, our grandmothers, and their mothers have been doing for 14 centuries. May Allah bless them, the women of this ummah. Uh, for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them that nature. That's how they are, that they, they see the importance of it and they'll do it. And many of them would also clean masjids. And many of the good brothers, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, plays that feeling in their heart for the houses of Allah, the masjids. That Thursday, they would do this. They would clean the masjid. Clean the masjid. Keep it clean because it is the night of Jum'ah. And they, they want to welcome the angels, prepare to welcome the angels. And when the angels come, they bring barak of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you, that you should be mindful of. And there are many hadith that talks about uh, some of the women among the sahabiyah, the women the companions. Uh, some of them are known regularly to uh, maintain uh, the cleanliness of Masjid and Nabawi. In the time of the Prophet they would do this. And the Prophet encouraged this, that you know, they would keep the, the masjid clean uh, in this way. And Alhamdulillah, that is something that has continued for 14 centuries. Masjid al-Haram, Masjid Nabawi, and so on. Uh, and, and your masjids, we are, we are, Alhamdulillah, here at the Islamic Forum, we have a beautiful group of murids that take care of the masjid and clean the masjid often, and especially Thursday, Thursday evening, to welcome the angels for Jummah, Yomul Jummah, Thursday night and Friday, that I want you to be mindful of. These are some of the initial adab of dhikr, or adab of dhikr, uh, and of the weird al-am, especially. Uh, I want you to do this. I, I, I want you to be able to practice this or do weird al-am, and then we would do this for all the dhikr that we are doing. Once you start it this way, then Allah SWT will bless you to continue it with the other dhikr. But the weird alam, the most important dhikr, the foundational dhikr of the spiritual journey to Allah SWT that you should be mindful of because every other dhikr is built on this weird alam. If you can establish this form, solid, strong foundation, the building would be strong. Your spiritual journey to Allah SWT becomes an effective, strong one, inshallah, that we should be mindful of. So, the weird alam, continue to do it, even if you may not be able to do it at the level I mentioned so far, but as I said, keep your eye on the ball, be, be, be mindful of the objective. You want to keep improving your state and your state of being, how you are when you're doing the dhikr, the weird alam dhikr, that you can do this more and more and more. Uh, to, to be mindful of the adab of dhikr. And the more you put into the dhikr, the more you get out of the dhikr. This is an important principle. Like the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it for salah, uh, that he says in hadith that you would not get out of your salah or benefit from your salah illa ma wa'a, except what you put into it. How you perform your salah. Do you perform it with a, a, a presence of, of mind and heart and body? Or you think about other things and so on? He says, Illa ma'a. What you put in your salah, that is what you get out from it, meaning your blessings. How much blessings you get from that salah? It depends on what you put into it. Similarly, your dhikr. 
You, you want to do it to the best of your ability that you would maximize your benefit and your blessings from the Wirdu Al-Am Dhikr. And inshallah, we will continue this series on the commentary on the Wirdu Al-Am Dhikr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you to be from among the Dhakirin, those who engage in Dhikr, Ahlu Dhikr, in the dunya and in the akhirah. Amin, amin, amin. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We want to make special dua now for everyone, for each and every one of you. Uh, firstly, for our donors, all those who donated today and yesterday and before, those who donated this now before. We want to thank our donors tremendously, and we want to make special dua for all our donors, praying that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless them with His special blessings, bless their entire family. Bless all their loved ones because of their donation to the Islamic Forum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer all their dua because of their donation to the Islamic Forum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enrich them many, many more times. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant barakah in, in their wealth, in their possessions, and grant them increased risk, sustenance from Him all because of their donation to the Islam Forum. So we make special dua for all our donors. We also remember and make special dua for our, the sponsors of our dinner program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them. We remember all of them and make special dua for all the sponsors of our dinner program. And for everyone that is signed into the chat, we recognize that you've taken the extra effort uh, to uh, sign into the chat. Uh, entering your name and the city where you're from and then your update on the three beautiful blessed projects that we are doing inshallah so special um, dua for all those who entered in the chat and remember once again the uh, the projects that we're doing three th three of them the gratitude project the salawat project and the quran project that for the gratitude project you enter into the chat something that you're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And then for the salawat project, uh, you enter in the chat how many salawat you recited today for your daily total, and then the overall total, the cumulative total since you started the salawat project with us, since you made your near to join the salawat project. Until now, uh, how many you've recited in total? And then for the Quran project, for you to enter, uh, the, where you've arrived in your recitation of the Qur'an ever since you made your niyyah to join our Qur'an project. Uh, so which surah you've stopped at today, uh, which ayah number that you've stopped at. And we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you to uh, do ongoing khatams, many khatams, your first one, the most important one, the most enjoyable one, and then many khatams thereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you to recite this book daily, the Quran project, which at least one page a day you recite. So uh, remember to enter all of that information in the chat. I, there are also several requests for dua. We want to uh, include all the requests for dua. Uh, you can send in your request for dua in the chat. Type in, type into the chat. What what dua you you want to request us to do? We make that dua for you. Uh, if it's something personal you don't want to put it in the chat, then you can send us an email with your request for dua to the email address we use for this program, shakefaisal at gmail dot com. Uh, so you can. Uh, we encourage you to send all the requests for dua every day when whatever you want to uh, us to make dua for, and then we. We, we make that dua for you, and uh, inshallah, we, we pray Allah SWT answer your dua and take care of your needs, inshallah. Uh, so your request for dua, you can send in. And then also, uh, if there's any anniversary you're observing, uh, like birthday anniversary, 
wedding anniversary, death anniversary for uh, one, uh, your family member, parents, grandparents, uh, your spouse, children, and so on. Uh, you put that in the chat so we can make dua for you as well. So th th this is how we want to make this program interactive for each and every one of you and for each and every one of you to benefit from this program. I also want to uh, include in the near for dua uh, each and every one of you, whatever dua you want to make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep that knee in your heart and we make that dua for you. And I also want to include uh, my parents, my mom and dad in dua and please do mention them in your dua as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for so doing. Uh, then uh, I, I want to once again remind you of our special appeal uh, for you to donate to the Islam Forum. We need your financial support and we make this special appeal to you that you can give a generous donation to the Islam Forum uh, whenever you're able to do so, whether it's every day or every week uh, and so on. Then you go to our website. This is the easiest and most convenient way to make your donations. Go to our website, Islamic Forum Online. The staff will enter the information in the chat so you can write it down. You go to the website to the donation page and there are several items there that you can make donations for. And whatever you'd like to do, you do your donations. The blessings are great from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so now I kindly request you to raise your hands and join me in dua with all of this near that I mention now, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبدو وإياك نستعين إهدنا سرّات المستقيم سرّات الذين نمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثن اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قديت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا إلا قديتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا هب لنا من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وارخنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in tawfiq and kabul and ziyada. As we conclude our program for today, we, once again we, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from the coronavirus pandemic and from all sources of harm. 
May Allah SWT keep you and your entire family and your loved ones safe and secured in good health and well-being. And may Allah SWT keep you and shower his special uh, blessings upon you. We thank you for joining our broadcast today. We hope you can join us every day, inshallah. Do remember to reach out to your family members, your relatives, your friends, and other Muslims you know, and invite them to watch the program. Inshallah, they benefit from it, and you'll gain increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you always in the shade of his special mercies. Until we meet again, assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.